Dan will essentially be switching cameras on the fly. Oh, right on. Hopefully. Yeah. Hi, Dan. Hopefully. Yeah. We're going to find out. Look at him. He's trying to do it. You good there? I, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Are you good? I'm good. I just don't want to ever look at that. This is going to look different than the other ones? I'm, yeah, I'm going to make it black and white afterwards. Okay. Yeah. I like the black and white. What did you guys do with that RN? I didn't get to see the show. You just grill mm. around COVID? I did so. There's this, there's this, uh, there's this parent coalition thing for Abington Heights High School, mm-hmm. and um, I just put a post in there. I'm like, anybody who's an RN that isn't afraid of losing their job, are they willing to come talk? Oh. And she responded, "Cool." Um, and then after her, I got like, I got like two more nurses that just hit up, hit us up. Did you get any negative? I didn't see any negative. There's no feedback. negative feedback. Yeah. Because- Do you guys get negative feedback? Not really. There's Not nobody, really. nobody who's like I was you're a racist, say, right? You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> Till this show <laughs> once i hope so Vinny. <laughs> i fucking hope so once we did get one comment that was like oh that guy kind of like was on the edge of being racist but it was like no yeah but it was me yeah <laughs> right it was like they were they thought no. i was okay. the one who was on that's the edge okay. yeah yeah <laughs> so all right you ready to give it a shot it's up to you man you tell me when you're ready me let's yeah. fucking go let's try to kill this for noon oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah done uh, an hour and 15 minutes of well, talking? That's you, a lot of talking. You will be shocked by at how quickly this goes. Okay. It it really does fly. Yeah. It's, it's astonishing. I've been here before doing the doing you, it with Tommy Toe a long time ago. And that, was, yeah. Yeah. that went on and on and on. I loved it. Yeah. It was fun. I love having conversations. I drank a bunch of beer. Did you? Did you want any bourbon? <laughs> no. It's no, too I, early? I, I, well, I got to go back to my baby. That's why I, I, think I, that's why I only have so much time. Yeah, you can't be irresponsible. Wait, I'm imaginarily high. <laughs> at all times wait a minute so you told me you said when you're coming in your wife's picking up stuff because you just had another baby yeah i had, you had a covid baby how many how many is I did, this it was you? a covid baby actually how it's many my sixth you you're six you have six fucking kids why? are we rolling tape dan yeah we're, we're always going. rolling <laughs> why oh okay do you, i mean <laughs> why do you have six after, kids <laughs> after two you have to get bigger vehicles a bigger house after two i got a vasectomy Oh boy! What? That, uh, yeah, I got a vasectomy in 1995. What? Yep. Okay. So I was, how was, I was married. I was married. My first wife already had children. Do you so. want to say this publicly? Yeah. <laughs> this oh, actually yeah. works. Oh, no, my story is uh, <laughs> my. I'm prolific in the output department. I mean, I, <laughs> I we have there's things to talk about when it comes to that. But my my you're a furious breeder. My first wife was had already had two children. Yeah. So. When our two were born, there was four kids in the house. And I said, I think that's enough. So I went and I got a vasectomy. Yeah. And then eventually divorce. And, you know, when you, after a divorce, I don't know if anybody here is married and divorced, but you just don't think you're going to, you don't want to get married again. You don't, right. even, you don't even want to be in love again, at least right. speaking for myself. And then I found the love of my life. And yeah. she said, you know, we, we got to start a family. I said, well, my stuff is all tied up. I, in 1995, in, ni- in 95, you sign Dr. Casson, who's out of business. He said, now, Vinny, he goes, this is not irreversible. This is permanent. You have to sign that. You know, you're never going to have children again. And I said, and I said to him, I said, I said, you know, there's, there's people on the moon. I said, I'm not worried about whatever. <laughs> yeah. I said, you tell me you can't fix something. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, two feet from my teeth. And yeah. You yeah. Put some- <laughs> <laughs> you put somebody on on the planet, uh, you know what I mean. So, so I signed it, and lo and behold, my my future wife uh, paid for my reverse vasectomy, which was not covered by insurance. It was cash okay. cash job, and it was done by Doctor Maury Wasnitzer. If anybody's looking to get their vasectomy reversed, he's the guy. I don't know about <laughs> anymore. Very, very specific <laughs> advice. On yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if he's still alive. He was pretty elderly back then, but. Uh, he it cost my wife sixty six hundred dollars to get my vasectomy reversed. And before he even he found out that I still had sperm, which was cool, didn't want to go through that again. Right. Um, and he said, yeah, let's do it. So they did the operation. It was wide awake. No, yeah. no. Yeah. yeah. Just 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 a local. And uh, this is wrong. This is Wait, two, are, you, are your legs it, in like stirrups when this is happening? No, no, it's wild. It's wild. It's 2006. And. There's the surgeon, and he has his right hand lady. Then there's this uh, gopher going around. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm laying down, and they they just have my junk all cut out. Everything else is all that blue hospital baloney. Right. They cut out a square for your cut junk. out a square yeah. for, for my junk. 
and I get the local and I don't feel a thing. I got a TV and then I got this, 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 You're go- watching the view. this gopher nurse, <laughs> this gopher nurse is there. Well, in 2006, we're talking like 16 years ago. So there, I, I took out my smartphone, which wasn't super smart in 2006, but it right. still could take video yeah. and picture. So it was a flip. No, you didn't. So you this have a video woman, of still? somewhere in between, well, not in between, but all the phones, the generations, yeah. the video this woman took is somebody has it. Because once I, I, I shared it with everybody, <laughs> I showed everybody what I, so the video I don't have, but I do actually have an action. That's not an action photo. I have a still photo of the doctor putting my testicle back into I would my puke. bag of tricks. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I'm going to bring it up. We are gonna. We are. Gonna you puke. have to find it. it it's, it's it's not even Can hard we put to it find. On a it's, it's if absolute, you find it. Absolutely. It's, 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 we have to blur. I out. have it in a special spot. No, we do. I can find it immediately. Yes, we have it's to a blur medical out. procedure. It is true. It, it is doesn't true. matter. So I'll bring this story to a to a climax. Per no se. pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. So anyway, I, there's there's some proof of it. So it's what's what's so wild is it's 2006 and and there's none of that stuff where you, you know now you can't even take a video camera into the hospital to videotape the birth of your babies being born. They don't allow it anymore. Really? I, I've had four. The operation was incredibly successful. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've had four kids since then. Um, so anyway, uh, I um, I have a I had a. My success, my operation was successful, but I couldn't get my wife pregnant naturally. So we had to do in vitro, which right, was another consider. 10 grand. It's a nightmare. Yeah. You know, and we ended up making three kids through my Discover card and <laughs> dicing it. <laughs> and, and then when, when and then oh. when it was discussed, because we have we still have three frozen embryos. Oh, that's and awesome. so we could have we could have had a child after our twins. So we have Vivian is nine. And Jimmy and Ivy are seven. They're going to be 10 and eight very shortly. So my wife and I, I'm paying f- every year two payments, one to yeah. keep them frozen. Right. And then one just, I'm not even sure it's like a penalty fee for my age for still having frozen embryos, or some kind of a, <laughs> some kind of a trick or something like that. So my wife and I would say, um, Hey, what about like these, these babies? I'm like, oh, defrost them fucking things. There's no, no more, no more kids for us. And she's like, I, I can't do that. She goes, well, you know, what if you die? And I'm like, yeah, have all the kids you want. Have all, <laughs> have three more of my kids. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And she kind of agreed. It was, it's much because I'm 55 and Carrie's 44. So I think six is enough. Like no, 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 right, no, no. So what so happened was, so we had five, right? So we had five, and then so let's go. Then over COVID, the reversal. Then over COVID, yeah, uh, you got bored. I well, that was all the time, <laughs> and then just I, I don't know how to. Ex- I, we were absolutely stunned when, because I never got my wife pregnant. Oh, this was natural. This was the only time my wife was ever pregnant. Oh. So this was kind of like, I'm like, well, we're naming it Jesus or Mary <laughs> or Joseph or, 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 or Elijah or something like that. This is, this is Jeshua. A, yeah. Exactly. This, this is a miracle child. And, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and lo and behold, you know, my age, her age, you get all the tests because there's a lot of risk yeah. for, Carrie was 43. When she delivered the babies, just turned forty four, and the everything was a go, and Good. we we have this super healthy, happy, uh, almost nine month old named uh, Sylvia. Awesome, yeah. So I look like this. I used to be beautiful. You guys have no <laughs> idea what I used to look like, but now I look like this because of my lifestyle. Because owning a bar that's open yeah. seven days a week, and then and then being uh, a dad, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all it's the time. Lot. So. You know, how do you find is. the time? How do you find the time running a bar and and having you know this brood? Oh, super like super good employees. Like if I, what some people go through, I I couldn't handle. I'd have to sell my bar if I didn't have my brother in law working there. Right. If I didn't have yeah. the Boyarskis working there. If I didn't have David Moore. If I didn't have, I, I can mention every bartender I have. If the, if those people didn't work there, then I couldn't do what I do, which is tr- I trust them. Right. And then I have a I have a cook who has been cooking twenty five years. Your phenomenal now. Thank you. Yeah. But I, I do. And the answer to the question is that I have the right people in my business, and that allows me to go home and not go. Is someone stealing? Is someone? Yeah. Is right. someone? You yeah. know what I mean? Is someone ruining my business, and I'm not there? Yeah. I, right. I, I don't think any of that. I just I'm the luckiest bar owner that I know. I mean, I'm sure there's yeah. some other luckier bar owners, but I don't know who they are. I'm the most fortunate because I 
I can attend to my family needs because I have the right staff. And without the right staff, then you have these things that you're saying, geez, how do you do it? Well, right. If, you're, if you have the right staff, and of yeah. course, have a partner as well. You know, Frank, right? Frank, who, who handles all of the business end mm -hmm. of everything. You know, checks get written by him. He oversees all that stuff. And then I just have to be the fluff guy, you know, the Facebook guy and, and the website guy and, and the hype man. The hype. I'm the hype guy. Yeah. So it's, that's it's, how I do it. It's funny you say that because listening to you say that is exactly how I describe my business. Like, it, what is the Lavish secret sauce? And home. Yeah. What is the secret <laughs> sauce? It's the people. Yeah. And if you don't have good people, you don't have a good business. End of conversation. You uh, you know you can have you can have a business and you can still succeed, but businesses like mine are still growing yeah. because the because you can get a Budweiser anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you can get a how many times drink. have I said you can get a haircut anywhere? You've, yeah, uh, uh, all the time when I don't go to you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> when we kick him out of the bucket and let him come in. <laughs> but it's true. Like you've discovered the secret to a small business. I'm the luckiest. Yeah. I you know and. When I mentioned these people that I did mention, you know, these people are caring and, and, and courteous mm -hmm. and respectful, you know? And so once I've, that's, that's what I've done. That's what I've accomplished as a bar owner. Yeah. We don't have the coolest drink menu and we don't have the coolest anything. We just have the, the people that you don't mind yeah. going, sitting in a bar. You don't mind that person that's waiting on you because that yeah. person is cool. Yeah. Right. And if you could put that in your business, then you find other things. Your friends are what, why you're there. Right. Or you know what I mean? Or you're you just like you feel safe. Yeah. All those things, you put all those things together and then you have a successful business, I think. Yeah. You know, I'm not a sports bar. I don't have to worry about sports. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not a I'm not a um I'm not a certain area bar attracting just certain people and have to worry about, you know, uh, curtailing to them. It's a great place, great location, mm -hmm. parking. You know, <laughs> parking is parking is key. You know, that's yep. how you can fit so many people. Well, you had, a, you had a you had a, a kerfuffle with the parking. For yeah, a yeah, that was and that you was guys make amends. It's, I, I that's a, that's a, that's over two years now that that we're that we're cool with Charlie from the glider. That's we, really awesome because we guys... weren't. Yeah, but it's so it's so <laughs> awesome. What was the issue there? Oh man, uh, well, we our customers were using his space the one right across the street that's just, yeah, the just like, the, like the strip yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so so we well, people in scranton they like to they're like oh that looks open yeah yeah and the signs were well posted <laughs> uh, <laughs> private, <laughs> private parking or glider only yeah you'll be towed yeah you know so uh so uh we we saw what was happening yeah and so not only did we see what was happening we saw the aftermath of what was happening the beer cans, mm -hmm. the beer bottles. Oh, no. So we said, oh, okay. we, he never, he never came to us first. We came to him first and we said, can we buy this piece of land off you or can we play, pay the taxes on it? Right. And uh, it, it, it never happened. What never stopped happening was, was people parking, people there. parking yeah. there. And then it turned into, uh, he found a guy to tow cars, which I, we, I took great offense to. And then customers took even greater offense because yeah. it was three hundred dollars to get your car back and it was Yeesh. just over on linden holy so shit. they would tow your car to linden uh, even even once he got it up he wouldn't take yeah. it down so if your car got hitched you were done you were 300 bucks you know he yeah, meet me over there Walk. yeah meet me over there right yeah. so so uh eventually and things got really cold the cold war was on mm. and and it wasn't from him it was all me i mean i was all over the radio breaking his balls and i was in the electric city breaking his balls like any chance i remember all of this any chance that i could i never heard any of this this is amazing oh you never heard oh, about no. this no the glider diner v-spot fight no <laughs> and uh you know we just we took it we took it personally because yeah. we wanted to do what we want we well, you reached out we to do the yeah, right thing we, on the we front did, end. we did yeah so for whatever reason that it didn't it didn't happen um it was brought together through a mutual friend where I was uh, saying, you know, because the business kept growing. We were busier. Every, yeah, yeah, yeah. every week was bad. We were just, yeah. we never, we, we never stopped growing. Yeah. So it was just endless. And I just felt bad. So the, the guy that he hired to tow the cars he went to jail. So, <laughs> and nobody locally, <laughs> nobody locally would tow. They said, that's bad business. Yeah. Right. That's right. bad business. You know, yeah. I, I know Vinny, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Moletsky's, I, I know those guys and like, we don't want to come and tow his customers. It's bad business. Yeah. So it, it, the, the towing stopped, but my, 
guilt or my wanting to do the right thing. My friend, the right thing is yeah. all I was going to do. Yeah. So we found I I was uh I, I befriended a guy who used to work for him, uh, he's similar in age to me. He heard me out and he said, "Hey man, he goes, he's really not a bad guy." I said, "Well, I said he might not really be a bad guy, but when the way we interact, right, he's not a good guy, right? You know, that's all." So he he got to him expressed that we wanted to make amends that we still wanted to pay we didn't want anything for nothing yeah and he just basically like you know the the ice melted yeah and he, he did you guys have a sit down yeah yeah he came over to the he came over to the bar did you buy his drinks well we weren't open <laughs> i would have i would have but he, he came over to the bar and uh and we apologized for our customers and we said we never really wanted any of this to happen he says fellas he goes we've been through so much and he yeah he it, it wasn't long-winded or anything like that and he said, you know, we're cool. And I said, we still want to pay for that. And he never even asked us. So now from that day forward, you know, this it's been the same thing. And he still has the signs there. Signs are still there. But uh, there's no reason to think that he is going to tow a car. So that was that was long. That that went on for a long, long time. Yeah. That kerfuffle. That was that was a, that yeah. was a kerfuffle. And then every 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 morning, not every morning, but the mornings, not the weekend mornings when I go out there and I'd see all the stuff. Out there, I'd be like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> All that stuff in the parking lot. So, you know so, I mean? so did this like uh, this olive branch happen after March of 2020? It happened before. It was it. It was we had to meet because we were going through the uh, Steam Time Music Awards again, right? Where people were going to be parking. Yeah, be people were going to parking yeah. everywhere, and I just wanted to. I think the first thing I was said to him, "Hey, V Spot wants you to know that there's another big event." There's going to be cars there in the day, mm. in the daytime, which his his spot won't normally be used in the day. But once the night comes and the right. bands come on, then people are just rolling right in. They see a spot they don't think about it and they go. So this was kind of like a heads up. And it was, I guess it would be three years this year. Two years have passed since that the olive branches have been extended and everything is cool. And I just had uh, on my birthday in December. Uh, me and my two oldest children, who are almost 30 and 27. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> went over to the glider and Charlie was there and Charlie yeah. sat across from us and spoke at the right times. Nothing worse than a owner coming over you with a mouthful of food. You know what I mean? <laughs> or or while you're trying your plan footsies under yeah. the table. And right. like, hey, thanks for coming by. And so he sat over there. He knew when to speak to us, but he just wanted to make me feel so comfortable. So... I th this fire, right? Yeah. So super bummer. I, I'm kind of curious because uh, I ran into you at Peculiar on uh, what was it Sunday? Sunday, night? just Sunday for the benefit. Um, a fundraiser, I guess. And, the yeah, best. Yeah, NEPA scene put on like a fundraiser for you guys because you went down. Um, and you can't open currently. Uh, I want to get to that. Mm -hmm, yeah. But first, I kind of want to go through. Um, because I think I went like COVID crazy. Cause I'm like, Oh, okay. I need to understand like what people have been through, um, how they've managed it, how they're going to succeed, how they failed. What I know you guys were shut down for a while at the beginning of this. I think it was March. It, it to was, June. it was because of, it was because of us though. We that you shut down. Yeah. We, we tried. So if all your, I know I cut you off. That's okay. You're a rude cock. Sucker. I apologize. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I try not to be, but, every, but everybody knows that. Yeah. It's who I am. But everybody knows I am. Right. Um, so we were, we would never saw ourselves as a restaurant and our kitchen's very small. And, and really one person works there all the time. We got one guy that yeah. works and on steak night, we'll have two. Right. And as things kept growing, we'd have somebody come in part time for a couple hours, get us through like a dinner rush or something like that. So back in 2020, um, we when when COVID hit and we were closed down, we were allowed to open up just as a to go place. This is before Tommy got us alcohol to sell. Tommy Tell, from Tommy Thursdays. Tell from Thursdays yeah. got us. You know he, he, he fought was, so he, hard for that thing. He was a huge advocate for I, drinks to go. I don't know. I, I consider him the advocate, not yeah. even like a huge. He was the guy that carried a thing all the yeah, way. He was like Zeus on Olympus. A, a yeah. hundred, it was Xerxes. I just watched <laughs> Xerxes. Three, I just watched mm. three hundred the other mm. night. Yeah, yeah. And I know I'm straight because there was no blood went to my wiener watching that show. Like so many women say, you know, oh, so stimulated by all yeah, those ads. You kind of look at them and you're like, I wish. <laughs> I kind of oh, wish. Wish. I wish I looked in the mirror. If you like said to me, Butler. Vinny, I'll give you a thousand dollars to come on the show shirtless. I'd be like, shove up your ass. 
because I don't need the. But here's thousand. a picture of my open but scrotum. Yes, but here's what? my scrotum. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I don't need it that bad. <laughs> so yes, the, the impressive show. So so we um we got a we got fifty thousand dollars from the PPP, and that was gone in like two months time. Holy shit! Um, it's you know food's not very profitable. Not my well, in, in the food. restaurant business. It's yeah, not very well, not 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 as a food. not as a bar guy. Not as not as a guy who when you go to my place, if you saw the cheeseburger was twelve bucks, you you probably wouldn't go there and eat cheeseburgers. Right. But when you see the cheeseburger is eight bucks or eight fifty, right. you're like, okay, I'll pay more. I'll pay me for, pay more for this than I will a Whopper. I could have a logger with it. And so so right. that's the way, and I think it's very common that most of the bars my size think the same way. We're all in that same. Of have affordable food, not a mm-hmm. huge money. You still want to lose money. Right. You don't want to lose money. So a lot of my prices are like what I think are affordable. They're not what you need to succeed as right. a restaurant. Those are not the right prices that I have, and neither is anybody else's that is my size. Those are prices to accentuate alcohol sales, uh, particularly liquor, which is incredibly profitable. Right. Beer, not so much at all. But liquor, if you could sell a lot of liquor, then you could pay for could pay for advertising and mm-hmm. you could do other things with, sure. with the money. So uh, we realized that after, I think we went for about two months because we just spent the $50,000 uh, um, not making money right? and paying yeah. bills and paying ourselves as owners. You know what I mean? Because you have to we didn't, survive. Yeah. We yeah. didn't have any, didn't have any income. So, so that went pretty quickly. What happened next was when they, when they said you can't sit at the bar, we just closed. Yeah. And we told our employees collect, you know, because um, did they say that two months in? Uh, June, I believe it was June when they said he couldn't sit at the bar anymore. So we're we're, we're shut down March seventeenth. Like it was like literally, mm-hmm. yeah. it was literally uh, not parade day, but uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And then so we were shut down. We were friends of mine that did to go business never almost never closed. You were allowed to go, and that wasn't something that we were into. So once we got the money, we started doing to go. Only lasted so long. Um, and then I, you were allowed to reopen the bar, but people couldn't sit at the bar. And you couldn't. Well, even before you couldn't sit at the bar, yeah. we went and got tables and we put them around the bar like mm-hmm. everybody was doing. Which is the stupidest thing. You can't sit at the stool, but you can you, sit right, at the you, table right, right could, next you to it. Touch, right, you cannot touch You cannot touch the bar. The distance between you and the bartender has not changed. It's just the altitude has. <laughs> it's Exactly. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. And, you know, we were all had to wear masks. And it you was, walk in there and you go like, it oh, was, it's so nice. COVID doesn't go below six feet. Or the, if you don't have chicken tenders, you know what I mean? You're, you were going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we had to close. What do we? We had to close at, oh, to eleven. Right. We were only allowed to go to food. eleven. You had that, to serve food with booze. Yeah, I forgot about it, that. Part. It, it was. It was. It was wild. And it, so it's. It's happening. It's new. There's no precedent. There's nobody's story to read about how they did it. It's. Yeah. It's, it's all. There's no law. No, yeah. There's no guidance. It was. No, it was. You know. It was. And you hear this one's trying to get away with that one, and that one's trying to get away with this one, and you know your liquor license. You don't own your liquor license. You could sell your liquor license. But you don't own your liquor license. Really, yeah. the state mm. owns and polices your liquor license. So, so they have a control over the you. Control they, can, they will. No, there's not even some degree. I feel. Full degree. I, I feel like the LCB owns me, and I'm allowed to make money because of this liquor license. As long but, as they get their cut. Well, or but they could come in. I feel like if you're say you're just a terrible person, <laughs> and you know how people love to get terrible people yeah. back, or you know, vengeance or whatever. Right. Like I feel like they could they could make your life incredibly difficult, and you know, and they have a strike system. Like you get a, a fine for, to a certain amount the first time, and mm-hmm. then if you're a repeat offender, that they might take your license for like not let you open up for a couple of days, and that could turn into they did the two didn't weeks. They? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so you know, and that's another perfect example is that so the LCB. You now that's how I make a living. I don't have a side hustle. I'm a bar right. owner, right? So I respect. The LCB more than I want to mm-hmm. respect <laughs> anyone mm-hmm. or anything. You know what I mean? I, right. When you say LCB, I go, huh. I dab my forehead and go, What's, <laughs> where? What is happening? What's happening next? So we followed all the rules. And even some of our customers were like, well, you know, why don't you do this? Or why don't you do that? Or why don't you sell me that? And mm-hmm. we wouldn't do anything. We were as legit as it got. And it, it stunk. Because some people are like, well, I'm going over here because they're letting me do this. So right. We wouldn't play any of that. So June comes and they say, you can't sit at the bar. And we're like, 
we're not a restaurant. We're not we're right. not even servers. Like right. at the V spot when it's busy, almost not even I don't mean when it's busy. We don't really leave the bar and wait on you. We will bring you food. We'll take your order. Sure. But you have to leave a, a, a table and, and come get drinks, especially yeah. Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Because we can't get through the You're crowd. You're not checking on people. That's, That's your baked potato. Exactly. Not, yeah. not happening. It's right. So, you know, we do what we do. And it's been like that for 11 years. Now we were and kind of before uh, May or June uh, of last year rolled around. That's when we opened up with, with no more restrictions. But that period... From uh, let's say late summer of 2020 to Memorial Day, where where all the restrictions were lifted, we were serve we were waiters. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. we were we were waiting on people, and and uh, I, although I've done that for 11 years before I opened the bar, I was a bartender for 11 years before yeah. the V Spot opened. Um, I I was never a waiter; I was always a bartender, and I just felt, and I know my staff also. It, it wasn't our wasn't our thing, you know. When you don't, you don't know the V spot for that. You know the V spot for you know that funny, friendly service at the bar, and good tunes, and and good tunes. Yeah. yeah. So and so next thing you know, we struggled, but we survived. Yeah. And that's really what you know. You want to know how do we do it? We did it because of my staff. You know, these people were like, you know, this is this is. Did everybody step up? Oh, and the majority the, of them. And then some. Dave Amori, who works for me. He owned his own bar. He owned the Far Tavern. He is in the restaurant industry as a bar owner and now as a bartender and prior as a bar manager, like 28 years. You come into my bar, there's a guy might have more experience than you, your age working for me. So when you have people like that yeah. in there, they're, they're already up. If they're stepping up, you know what I mean? They, they need a crown and a cape. Right. Mm-hmm. I got the Boyarskis, their family's owned a bar for 100 years. They work for me. A century? <laughs> a century. Like, I would take a Holy soft shit. bullet to a non-organ spot for those people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would punch a, a bar owner in the face if they took those people from me. They yeah. mean, these people That's are, how personal that would be. I, I'd be that personal because, I, in my opinion, when I say they're the best, I don't mean they're the best drink maker. I, and they're all great at what they do. I don't mean the best. When someone says, that's the best bartender, there is a there are best bartenders out better there. Better mixologists. But to me, right. there, there, the are, there are no yeah. better bartenders than my bartender. Well, at a certain point, to you me. become like family. Because when you stop and do the math. There, Bobby Ruddy opened the bar with yeah, me. I love that's the my Ruddy's. brother-in-law. I love the okay, that's my brother-in-law. We're open 11 years. He's been there since day one. The next bartender that got hired was Jerry. That's nine years ago. His sister yeah. came six months afterwards. Yeah. Dave amori has been with me six or seven years. So my... And his daughter, who's raised in the business, his daughter right. works for me now. Right. You know, Mara Mensinger has been with us for four years, maybe five. She started at McGrath's in the kitchen as a teenager. Right. Mm-hmm. I have experienced awesome people. And if I didn't mention anybody, it doesn't mean it. Beth Bartley's been with me almost a year. She, she's bartending 13, 15 years. She's 33. Her family owns a bar. At 18, she's a bartender. Holy mm-hmm. shit. So I have these bartenders these are bartenders to me right you know and of course they're like family of course because yeah because i'm the guy that gives them all the power i said listen i'm not yeah. here it's your bar how are you gonna how are you going to do Don't that Don't fuck it up well yeah without without like it getting back to me where i'm now questioning how you did something well you're, because you're giving them ownership right you're giving them buy-in if if they just feel like an employee like i said i don't call my employees employees they're my coworkers. yeah 100%. because they don't work for me we work together and there's, a, and there's yeah, another, I mean that's a beautiful way of putting it. I don't speak in those beautiful terms like that. Well, but, you don't, you don't but know, I, the same sentiment is well, you don't know, you don't own a salon either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always I, wanted to own something that rolled off my tongue like that, a salon. Well, well, you could, I own, you I own could a turn, bar. You could turn the V-spot into a saloon <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't cut yourself on, short, man. You're you're actually a marketing genius. Mm. I, as somebody who's done marketing for a living, it's been a part of my world. Is that's this on how tape? No one's ever called me that. Let me, no, you really get that here. No, huh? the <laughs> it's most, on tape, man. Vinny, the yeah. most fun I ever had back when I worked at the Times was when you and I had to put your ads together. And that was not, cool. It was fun, It right? was a ton of fun. Because you don't remember like, me ripping up my neighbor back then? I, I, I think that was after I left. Oh, okay. They were the best ads ever. Oh, the, it, all in good fun. You and I would literally get on the phone or in I person. Like, I like people. And it would be like, how much trouble can we get in without getting Micah fired? <laughs> and that was that was our goal every time we met to put an ad together. Yeah. yeah like, can we show full frontal nudity? It's it. <laughs> Is that, I mean, like, how much trouble will we get in? We haven't. So I just wanted to always push. Yeah. 
and make people laugh. If if it wasn't, yeah. if I didn't think it was funny, right, then I wasn't interested. Almost all, I think, almost every single, actually, every day of my life, if I if I'm not doing something amusing to somebody else, I'm bored. Then yeah, yeah. I think that's it's my it's my thing. I yeah. I want to make people laugh. I want to make people have a good time. Yeah, I think that's and so the people that work for me are all in that vein. They know who I am. Mm-hmm. When when I hire you, I talk to you and I say, now listen, if you can go anywhere, they're gonna come here, and it doesn't matter how I got them here. No matter what TV commercial I did, mm-hmm. no matter what I said on radio, doesn't matter. My job is just to get them in that door for the and first their time. Their job is to right. keep them, and there. then. The, the next thing that happens is out of my control. All the money I spent, you know what I mean? All of the, all of the hours doesn't mean a thing. If, if you're having a bad day and that person came because yeah. they heard a steak night and they're there for the first time, you're now the number one thing. And they leave with your, with your first impression, like everything. And we're, I mean, we're all the guys have beards. I mean, you know I mean? We're shabby looking, you know yeah. what I mean? We're not the prettiest people in the bar business. Um, so we have those that we call the V spot, not necessarily, you know what I mean? The most homogenized name of where you're going. You know, you're meeting. It's, it's a little, the it's 20, a little there. The 21 year old girls are, are finally 21. They go, where are we going? Mm-hmm. And then a uh, Trixie goes, well, I want to go downtown. And Trixie. then, uh, right. <laughs> Right. And then Barbie goes, I want to go to the V spot. I'm not going there. My mom said, don't go. So, so we, so My we, mom said, don't go. Right. So, so we battle. And Trixie and, never go to the V spot. Yeah. So we battle all, 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 what I, what I call is, uh, you know, some of these obstacles because, but, yeah, but there's a big difference between perception and reality. Oh, it's right? huge. It's all, it's all, it's, that's everything. What you're speaking about is perception. When people walk into that bar, mm-hmm. it's, it's like, it, it, there's there's a real familial. There's Christmas lights everywhere. How could you great. not? How could you I'm not so be happy. comfortable? I'm so happy you turned JD Crackers into something into less like sad. Uh, like like Santa Land. <laughs> yeah. There we have icicle lights uh, uh, right around the, the yeah, bar. Yeah, it's great. You know, so it's, it's it's different. It's cozy. The televisions are in color. In case anybody watches this, <laughs> <laughs> I, fr- I remember the first time I brought my wife there. My wife's like a very classy lady. I'm. You're a very classy man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm and sure so he likes button down. I do <laughs> like I like button down. No, but uh, it was literally the first time I ever took her there. And it just so happened to be after a gala that we were at, like some sort of fundraiser. I'm in a tuxedo. She's in a gown we're, we had a crew of like 10 people. And everybody's like, you know, had a couple drinks. We're like, let's go somewhere for like a late night stop. Yeah. And we went to the V spot. Oh, how many people dressed? How many hands? <laughs> how many hands were like this for V spot? <laughs> all, all of them, except for my wife, because I think she just had in her head what you were just talking about. And so we all go. We traipse through the door. Everybody's like, "What in the world is going on?" Slapjaw was playing that night. Oh, oh my Jesus God! God. Slapjaw was playing that night. I used to work <laughs> with Jerry and Dave at the time was the lead singer. I throw a heart on every Facebook post. Either yeah. of them, yeah, either of them. The I used to work with the them world. way back in the day, so nobody knew that I knew them. Within the half an hour, I'm on stage with them in a tuxedo. Oh, it was man. the wildest. Fun. But I was. Had, was I there? Oh yeah, I was. There. Everybody had a blast. Yeah, and yeah, it's it doesn't. Fun. It doesn't matter if you're in a ball gown tuxedo. It's just a place where anybody can go and be comfortable. Yeah, my wedding night. It's just my, a very welcoming place. Dan, my, Dan, you you been there? Yeah, I was down there right kind of when you guys opened back up when Angelo was playing the one night. Angelo Marizelli. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. When he yeah, yeah. Down there yeah, the yeah. first time I was ever down there, I had a really good time. So, so it was a really good time? Yeah, I like it because it has that like small town bar feeling. I like, I don't know, I, I like the wood and I like you saying like yeah. the Christmas lights. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, not very it's big. No. Yeah. And I like it. It's cozy. It's comfy. And it's not very big. You got yeah. cold beers and yeah. loud music. And that's what I want in a bar. Yeah. I don't. I'm I, just mad that you're going to go outside to smoke again. Well, that's man, bullshit. That thing, was a, that thing was a kiss concert for 10 years. Like, <laughs> you, you, know, you walk in there and you're like, just waft. Where are we? Where are we? So I, yeah. I apologize to all my smokers about that. But so yeah, that was really. Uh, so I had to, you created it, it a had great to, culture, man. It had to be done. Yeah, it had to be done. wonderful. Which, place. which, which is, which is a testament to why you're still here. Yeah, you know the support that that the community has and the people that go there, man. That familial my, aspect of it. My biggest Facebook post to date is the announcement that we were going non-smoking. It Your was biggest. It was pro or con. It was shared. Oh, they were all literally. They were all pro. Like, really? There was, it was. I'm the only asshole. It was 100. <laughs> it was one, one. I shared it. I was like, "This is bullshit." I'll, I'll never forget it. I talked about it forever. It was a, 180 shares at 50,000 views. Um, and and they were all like, "Oh my god, I could go back there." I came in there once, would never go back in there yeah. again. 
So, you know, it's, it's helped you, you think it, it's it's Look, it took smoking's us, bad. We can all agree on it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I, it we our business I, skyrocketing is, is a funny is, is a silly word. Yeah. But how many people smoke? How many people don't smoke? There's probably and I don't this is not a number I've ever researched. There got to be 50 people that don't smoke to every person that does. Probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I just that's Easily. a number in my in my in my head. So how many people would never come to my bar? Because no matter how we had two smoke eaters, we had vents. But still, if it's Saturday night, Friday night, oh, and there's a big band there, yeah, there's people are smoking. You know, and every ashtray's full on yeah. the hour. You you can't escape it. Yeah. So, um, so now there's no smoke in there. Yeah. There's a lot of cigarette butts out front. Scumbags. And that's us. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> smoking it's the, scumbags. It's the worst. Just get a leaf blower. And I, and I have two butt. I have two butt huts hung up on the wall. Yeah. Let's say stuff your butts here. Nobody fucking does. <laughs> Everyone's like, fuck you, Vinny. <laughs> Charging um, me that much for that drink. So when when this all, over the last two years, I remember that there was a, a contingent, because a lot of people think that like bars are in competition with each other, mm -hmm. right? For the most part. You know, I know that they're like, oh, that's this, a thought. I don't feel that which, way. Which I think was totally harpooned when I realized that all the bar owners in the area were talking to each other. Did you, were you involved yeah, in conversations me, so like you, that? You guys know Damien mm -hmm. Biancarelli well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I, I wish I could tell you, it doesn't matter, but me and Damien were going to do a telethon. Okay. And it was probably Damien's idea. And Damien says, let's do a telethon, Vinny. Let's raise some money and let's, let's, let's put on, let's go, go buy some horrible tuxedos. Yeah. And let's do like a real telethon, with, uh, raise some money with local talent and so forth and so on. So I started a thread uh, that eventually I got Damien out of when it didn't happen. Right. And I got Rich Howells out of this thread, but I, I kept this 11 bar owner thread going. And from that moment, we talked about everything and anything. Where can we buy wings cheaper? And Hey, LCB is out. Mm. Now, now you were, now you were sending one text to 11 bar owners prior to that. You know, I didn't have a uh, I didn't have a bar owner group, right. but you know, now we were all on each other's side. Not that I ever thought we weren't on each other's side, but now, now there was everyone chiming in. I'm looking out for you. I'm looking right. out for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we all posted everything that we could, and there's still that that thread is still going. Um, Tommy's Tommy Tell is not in that thread any longer. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy McGrath is there. Um, That's my cousin. Jeff, Jeff Jeff from the dugout. Uh, uh, Morgan. From Waldo's, Tony from uh, Morgan's, Cosmo from uh, from Cosmo's, uh, and I'm probably on and, Oak. Yeah, on Oak and uh, uh, Tommy, who owns the Lace Works. Mm -hmm. So you know we're all, we're all in this little group, and I probably uh, and, and um, Donnie from Gavin's is in it as well, and maybe I'm leaving somebody out, but we're all that that thread is still alive. You know what I mean? So there's no, I don't see any competition. I don't need to have the biggest house. I don't need to have the biggest truck. I have one. Right. I don't need it's, it to be it's any bigger. It's, it's, it's horrifying and embarrassing. Yeah, you look like Tony Soprano right now. I, I apologize to everyone. And then you hung. And I then apologize you hung, to everyone. And then you hung <laughs> breastfeeding <laughs> apparatus <laughs> on your rear view mirror. I, that's true. Yeah. My it's wife's true. coming. I'm going to leave this here. It's true. I, I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm 56 this year. I'd like to be a bar owner for another 10 years. And I'd like the money from the bar business to get me there, and then maybe you know yeah. sock some aside. I don't, I don't care how how big anybody else gets. I only worry about me. Right. You know, I want everyone to have everything. And if we all feel the same way, then we all support each other. And, yeah. and, 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 and when I was saying that, um, the bar most like me now is Finnegan's, and. Kevin and I are friends. Kevin's we're, a great guy. We're friends before me being in the bar business. Uh, Kevin had a what was his band? Go go. Was it what was what was the name of his band? Uh, he used to crush it, man. He Kevin is a super talented guitar player, and um, he heard in 1986 that I played guitar. Now I'm like 10 years older than Kevin. I think I'm not right. even 100 sure. So a guy I never met heard that I played guitar. He came to my bedroom. At my house, oh, that sounds listen comforting. to me play guitar, and I joined his band. Really? Wow. So I've been friends with Kevin Locker for 
36 years or something like that. That's unbelievable. So he's in the bar thread right? because we're friends. So I, I would have felt terrible if I never mentioned his name. So, But Kevin is doing uh, very similar things to me. And Kevin just called me last week and says, hey, um, the, uh, uh, I got a COVID cancellation. Can you help me? For, I need, for entertainment. I need a bartender. Oh, uh, for like staff. I, I'm talking about oh, like, yeah, you know, yeah. we ask each other for help. Yeah. And I got him. A, my bartenders aren't working. I found him a bartender to work last Saturday night. I, you know, I can suggest bands. Kevin's in the band business and I, there's not a lot of secrets there, but I'm going to help everyone. I'm, I'm not not going to help you. Is, if is, you need help, I'm it, not not going to help you. Yeah. I feel like that changed because of COVID. Like our business, like the salon business is very cutthroat. Oh, really? Oh, very, very. Well, you got to think about this. Like if they're all, sta- they're all strapped, they're all going to shoot each other. <laughs> yeah. But like if, if they're you all lose, gonna, Dan, they're going to yeah. shave each other. Yeah. Yeah. If you lose a bartender, like that really sucks. If I lose a stylist, I lose $150,000 a year overnight. Yeah. So it's very cutthroat. Um, but I noticed when COVID happened, there was a local salon that shut down because of it. First thing, phone calls, how can we help? How can we help keep, keep you open? Come on. And that's. That Something never would have happened have, beforehand. Yeah. Well, never. A salon closes. Like, I remember one of the girls that works for us came from a salon that closed down. And as soon as everybody heard they closed down, it was like vultures. What stylus can we get? What book can we yeah. get? And it like, but when this one closed, it was like, no, no, no. We got to help them stay open. Because if they close, it's bad for everybody. I know. It changed everything. I don't know what it is, but it changed everything. You I know I look thing? like I get my hair done. I don't. <laughs> I think I've been using comb. But I go to, well, as it got this woolery, yeah. or woolly, uh, yeah. it's a brush at this point. But yeah. um, I mean, it looks Chris, stellar. Krista and Damien. Mm-hmm. Damien gave me the hairstyle you don't see any longer. It used yeah. to be a top knot. And I oh, let like it, a ninja. And I let it, yeah, I let yeah. it grow, but it's still all shaved underneath. I, mean, oh, I, I maintain the underneath? The underneath is maintained. Mm. But I go to Krista uh, because she works for me, and yeah. I go to Damien. So yeah. Damien does my hair. Uh, and then three, four months later, I go to Chris. And then three, four, four months, I go back and forth. Yeah. And I saw and I heard about um, the kindness in the industry. Yeah. Um, because that you guys got hit. Just as not bad. As Barbers no, got not as hard as you guys. Well, oh, we got gosh. hit hard, but you guys got screwed. Yeah. Well, it I almost it almost felt like it was intentional. Like what bartender was having an affair with Governor Wolf? People. <laughs> <laughs> like, I saw the memes. I yeah. saw all the, all the all the things they said about him. Well. I'm like the guy in Dark City. Are, is like, are, shut it are you guys, down. Are you guys through the? Are you through the hardest times? I mean, clearly um, everybody's still getting COVID almost like more so, than yeah, ever. I mean, honestly, the past couple of weeks were rough because uh, everybody got COVID. Uh, everybody's gonna get but it. But when we reopened, honestly, when we reopened, the hard times were pretty much over. Oh, it's so awesome to hear. You know, like it, it was horrible being shut down. But when we reopened, I mean, yeah, it was a pain in the ass because you had to deal with extra regulations and certain things, but. Once we were able to, we, once we were allowed to reopen, it was actually two or three weeks later that we were on the phone telling Harrisburg how to safely reopen a salon, and that's when they gave gave out the salon guidance. Wow! Because we were you, told, I, I was one of the people. Yeah. Wow. So we were told we were allowed to reopen, and it wasn't until like several weeks later that we got the guidance. Because I remember calling a couple friends. Yeah, you were already people, open before you we got were guidance. open, and I called yeah. a couple of my friends who were politicians. I'm like, uh, like how everybody's getting guidance? We don't have any. He's like, they haven't written it yet. So right. I got on the phone and, and spoke to somebody and, and was like, okay, this is what we've done. And and then a couple of weeks later, they put out the guidance on it. Yeah. Well, and then we were allowed to reopen. <laughs> but you guys, I would have wore a nicer shirt if I knew I was going to be in the presence of, of your greatness and influence. No. Oh, he's not that great or influence. No, no, no. I don't know. I just most heard, of I heard greatness for, and influence. Most of what I've done for the past two years is just yell at politicians. Well, way yeah. to go. Yeah. We'll it's segue. We'll segue into that whenever you're ready. I mean, do you have, oh, I mean, do you have, do you. I I can't imagine, you know, I'm a lunatic, right? And, and I know that I was considered non-essential for a few months. You were always essential to me. I know, but that's, that's, (laughs) that's what keeps my heart from not breaking. Um, and I, and I was just looking around like him, him and I, uh, got together at like the end of April and we, we got about 40, some 40 to 50 businesses together in person around a zoom call. And we needed to get info to our representatives. Yeah. So we did, we did, oh. we did like a three hour meeting. Um, we had lawyers involved. We had all these people involved and we just wanted to get like simple raise your hand data. Like how many people have enough money to last for like the next two weeks. And the numbers were staggering. Yeah. Um, and it made me become very 
aware that people are going through shit that I don't understand and they need help just as much as anyone else. So, I mean, I don't know if COVID made us better people. I don't know that. that, I mean, when you guys were talking before about like, you know, the community, like this town, for some reason, it's like they will fucking hate your guts, talk shit about you, anything your house catches on fire. That prick's the first one there to help you. Yeah, that's true. Which is something bizarre about Scranton, Northeast PA, where it's like, hey, we hate that guy. Oh, but his house burned down. What can we do to help him? <laughs> it's got a benefit going. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's start a benefit. <laughs> yeah. That, um, but true. did you, did you yeah. feel, how many times over the last two years were you like, this doesn't, whatever authority is telling us to do stuff doesn't really Oh, man, make that, was, sense. that was just on the daily. That was that was every day you guys had new problems to deal with, especially in the bar restaurant business. We and did any politician talk to you? No, 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 nobody. No, nobody. Anybody in that in that group of 11 besides Tommy that talked to anybody? No one. No, that's pretty weird. You know, there were. Well, I mean, you no really, one reached out to you. We're going to shut you down. We're going to make sure that you don't get an income. Just uh, and no one's going to ask you if that's OK. I. <laughs> Governor Wolf, he just he ruled it, man. It was just it was it was what he said went and and like I said, the LCB followed. So yeah, they're an agency I, I, on, beholden on, to him. And and on this, so when you guys talk about your industry, but so his industry, talk about your industry, my I'm salon licenses, right? They can yeah, pull those a from you. Board of Cosmetology, yeah, same idea. So everything that you're saying, they come and surprise. I, I'm us following too. along, and then it and it just dawns on me that I am on Planet LCB. Yeah, and I and the LCB said you're going to follow everything right. that governor wolf that we didn't have to didn't matter whether we agreed or not mm-hmm. me and frank looked at each other and went well, because if you don't <laughs> I'm not because if i don't they're going to take my license and if they take yeah. my license and i don't make any money and yeah. now and now we employ 14 people and then 14 people aren't you know making any money so right. that was the hardest thing is whether i agreed or not whether i was empathetic to corona if i had fear or no fear it di- it didn't matter i am in fear every day no matter what of the lcb i live every day making sure that all that my place is is run correctly and would and if the lcb were to come in there are no underagers you know what i mean there is no over serving which is pretty tough to do in the in the business over not over serve i mean it's it's almost impossible but when you say fear because of the way different people enjoy alcohol when Mm -hmm. you say fear like how, you want fear to, how, can, how can you compare that fear to someone who doesn't understand it? Like a comparable fear, like standing on the edge of a cliff if you're afraid of heights. No, no, not no, <laughs> no, not not like that. Um, or just like I today could be the day you, something you know, gets fucked you, up. You know, our since the planet started, there's been anxiety, but it's only now that people talk about anxiety as an issue that it's mm-hmm. that it is something. So I think that, uh, and I'm not an anxious person. I never was. And, and even today, I'm still not as- You don't seem it. You're, as, ready to, you're ready to show us pictures of your balls. That's true. You don't seem anxious. And I'm going to. And I'm going to. That's a fact. <laughs> I wait. love this job. But, but, do you, but do you know how you know how people are now claiming themselves as, I am I have an anxiety problem yeah. and I yeah. need to be medicated, right. right? That's a bad idea. So, but of course, we didn't really change as a species. We're just now- finding ways to uh make it less anxious so people are medicating themselves um i i i, I liken having the lcb over my shoulder at all times as to being like a, just a bit of anxiety uh that never goes away it's just it's a hint it's almost like it's almost, it's almost like like a sore mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> for someone that, for like someone, a pulled muscle if, if for, yes for like exactly like for someone to understand what it's like to know that someone could walk in at any time during your business and shut you down. I've yeah. been in one raid um, in my life as a bartender. It wasn't at my bars before I opened up my own bar, but I was, you know, how many people heard of a raid? You're at a bar and, and, and the LCB came in. Yeah. All, like the under, all the under, underagers ran out the back door, so forth and so on. But I saw this guy come in and he walked in like his chest was so big, it was like he had, it was like he had umpire's vest on. Right, oh, right. And, he had this, and he had this badge that sat right in the middle where the Pope's crucifix usually is. And it, and it had this placard, you know, it was, it was sealed. A, a tsunami would never get to the paper. <laughs> and, and it, and it, it was like, I was like, you know, he walked in there. Who's who owns the WWF. You ever see the movie? Oh, Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon yeah, comes yeah, in yeah, yeah. and he's flipping his, That's kind of like, to me, that's what it looked like. And uh, we were tipped off. They said the LCB might come in. 
okay, whatever. So anyway, I was managing the bar at the time, but just managing it one day a week. And that guy came in and he just shut it down. You're, wow. you're, you're, you're shut down now. You're not serving that guy who's clearly 74. Yeah. He's not getting anything more to drink right now. I'm here. I'm here to look for something. I heard you guys are doing something here you shouldn't do. Now, it wasn't my bar, and I just, I'd never been in a raid, and no one told me anything was going on in the place. So, anyway, I've been through that. I've seen the LCB come in and demand your sales records, your invoices, and stop everything. So, I will, and I'm, I'm glad I saw it. Right. So, I'm just always, I always know that somebody out there could come into my business and disrupt it. Or you, how many times have you heard? And here's how I think how people get framed. You know, yeah, how many, how many yeah. times? Well, you know, didn't the alehouse just go through that? How many times a cop has a little bag of coke? He throws it in the yeah. <laughs> throws it in the back seat and like, right. crack on him. Hey, mm-hmm. Mister, what do you do yeah. with this little baggie? What's in yeah. there? Hope yeah. it's not salt. So it's I'm, not crazy to think about that because that's happened before. Well, and of course, so that this is my business. I'm I'm too old to to become a bartender five days a week to feed my family. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. I, I, I work uh, three shifts um, and my body is tired. Yeah, you got to feed 87 children too. And, yeah. and, 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 and who are, there's still You're three literal. frozen. There's and still, still three frozen. frozen. There's the potential my wife, for more. My, my wife might be at the, the hospital right now <laughs> having, <laughs> having two of them put yeah. back in her. There's a free, in the freezer next to the steakums or his other Correct. It's my embryos. <laughs> it's my embryos. Yeah. So uh, I hope everyone who doesn't own a bar, uh, to, if you have something, you know, some kind of an anxiety or any kind of issue, that is the extent of my anxiety. It's always there, but it's I don't need any medicine to deal. Sure. I don't need any medicine to deal with that, but it's always there. And, yeah. it's, and when we when these mics go off and I drive and we're opening our bar, we're hoping today is our inspection, our reinspection. Oh, finally? Is today, finally. Yeah. And you, you got know, everything fixed up that quick. Oh, my God. You have no idea how walk little him, walk him through how, that. How walk little through. we had to do uh, to we were asked what we were asked to do well, so walk me through that so i just remember walk him through the fire it was what <laughs> new year's eve i was in dixon city and he sends me a text uh and it was how much i care about you motherfucker you took the best picture He's of like, a fire i've ever seen in my life the v-spot is i have on well, fire. i have practice from the one that burned down behind <laughs> yeah, me yeah. yeah he just sends me a text says the v-spot is on fire and like the head exploding emoji and so i was like okay <laughs> I was like, does that mean he wants me to come to the V spot because it's getting crazy and they're having a great time? Or it's literally <laughs> oh, he thought, is it on yeah. fire? Yeah, he thought I wrote the V spot is lit. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So These I'm driving back. Easy I pull up and you know, and it's New Year's Eve, and there's fire trucks everywhere. Yeah, and, and people was, are crawling across your roof yeah. with axes. It's terrible. So walk us through that, man. What happened? Well, tell me how much time we have because you know how much time you have got, somewhere to you have be a hard out at noon. No, quarter after. That's that's okay, extending. So we got like so we have like minutes. Yeah, oh. 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, this is this is like a pleasure cruise yeah, talking yeah, to you guys. Yeah. I told you. I thought it was a lot later. I'm going to give you a reach around and, and, and I'll, I'll be fine. I'll take that. Yeah, take that. I'm going to I'm going to try to not bore anyone. It's okay. not boring, man. Fire's awesome. I'm going to try not to bore anyone with <laughs> unless this. it's burning down your <laughs> and, bar. And, yes. and it, says, it says it's only uh, that was it's it's just eighteen nineteen days ago. Yeah. So uh, and you're still closed and we're still closed yeah. that's this and yeah so the uh we we have a guy on our roof who is a general contractor and he uh he's working on another building of ours and we have a small leak mm-hmm. and um so he goes up he's licensed with the city so he takes a torch and it's called a torch down so he's 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 fixing he's fixing our our little leak with uh-huh. a torch oh no it's our, usually put down like a rubber sp- patch or something yeah well, yeah, yeah. You're, well what you're doing is like the tar you're you're, you're yeah, sealing yeah. it you know yeah. so this is uh this is new year's eve i made a decision and it's the first time i've ever done this i didn't open the bar i said i'm not opening the bar till seven because we had a covid uh bartender and i was gonna have to open and close on new year's eve and then i was gonna have to work the next day and knowing my body i said i don't i don't want to do that what if I just open at seven? Mm-hmm. Who's who's coming out before seven on New Year's Eve? Right. Nobody. Not enough people that right. I should stand there and wait on the 10 people that I'd wait on until seven. Right. So the bar is closed. Uh, our, our buddy is working on the roof and our cook is prepping for the night. Now, this guy catches the building on fire with the second floor. Um, 
screams, help, 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 help. Bernie in the kitchen. We had three fire extinguishers in the building. Mm -hmm. You know, we have one in the basement. We have one in a hallway and we have one in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Three fire extinguishers are used to fight this fire. Across the street is Diamond K. Um, there's a garage there. These guys see a fire. They bring over a fire extinguisher. A car driving by stops and takes out a fire extinguisher. In their so, car. Yeah, yeah. We have five, five completely depleted fire extinguishers. I've never used a fire extinguisher to depletion. I don't know how long they last. I have no clue. Right. And I've not even asked anybody. I'm just bringing it up. I don't know how long these things yeah. last. But five fire extinguishers are used before a fire truck shows up. So what could have happened is now the rest to your imagination. If we, if the cook isn't there, because we're not open, right, he just happens right, to be there. Right. So that could have gone up quick. I, I get a call at uh, five o'clock. I'm just leaving Montage Mountain. My wife sitting to my right. Three, four. The baby was with us too. <laughs> four kids behind us. Three of them had ski lessons. You know, for their first time skiing. Yeah. Five o'clock, Frank. Vinny, the bar's on fire. I said, okay. I said, I'm, I'm just leaving montage. I'll be right there. Got there. Fire trucks, uh, tape, everything. And the little that I learned quickly was it was an isolated fire. So immediately I'm not, I'm not looking at, I'm not looking at a Hollywood movie. Yeah. Uh, flames out the windows the and, and, and my business yeah. is going down. And right. So, so, you know, I was, I said to myself, how lucky I am that the place wasn't open. How lucky that the fire is going is you know is, right. out, is under control. By the right. time I get there, the fire's under control. So what happens next is going to lead me to where I am today, and everything that's happened in between has been incredibly disappointing. I mean, incredibly disappointing. So it's five o'clock on New Year's Eve. We show up somewhere around six o'clock, maybe seven o'clock, the latest. Two city officials are on my shoulder, telling me how sorry they are that the that the bar's on fire. Now, this is their time. Right. This is New Year's Eve mm -hmm. at six, seven o'clock. And they're both there to say, this is terrible. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. Well, I don't, you're bringing, what are you bringing? Like nails and, mm -hmm. and hair, you know, yeah. what, are we, what are we doing tomorrow? So they rebuild? Correct. Yeah. So the next day, uh, these two city officials showed up to condemn me. Right. Which is the thing. Fuck off. Yeah. To, well, it's the it's the procedure. It's the process. It's the process. Yeah. It's Saturday now. This is Saturday. This is their day off. Not only Friday after hours. This is their New Saturday. Eve, New Year's Day. So there. this is New Year's Day. They're there in the afternoon. Yeah. To walk through. Um, our power was pulled. And so we had no electricity. That's done. That's routine in a fire. Yep. And uh, our uh, water was was turned off. So in case there's another fire in case <laughs> that doesn't make sense <laughs> right? Yeah. at all. So anyway, so they show up on Saturday to tape up all the signs, you know, you are yeah. condemned. Fire marshal is there. Then the chief inspector also are there. Mm -hmm. and they showed me, you know, this is where the fire started. Here's the damage. Come up to the third floor. And um, the fire dam, the, the damage in the bar is from here. To hear yeah. water that came through ceiling tiles. That's the damage in the bar. That's the extent of it. That's the extent of the damage in my bar. Now, um, if uh, so, everyone's looking at me on the cameras. So if this way is the beginning of the bar out to the stage. Yep. And this is the, more like the entrance. The bar isn't even touched. Not even the chair closest to the entrance has a spot on it. There's no water and damage. Water. And this is just water. It just came through the ceiling tiles because they put the fire out, a second floor fire. Yeah. So we received you know, water damage. Yeah. So the water damage is in this isolated area. The water damage from the, from the fire trucks take out two electrical receptacles. Like regular wall outlets. 29 cent receptacles that you go to Lowe's and you, and you, and you, and you, and you buy. Like, you know, okay. 20, 20, two 29 cent receptacles. Our, our water got in the wall and, and they were damaged. Uh, so in this, essence, they shorted out. You just got to get an electrician, go in, replace them. Or you could. Or, well, you got to be licensed no, in the no, city. No. Oh, you can't? In order you to get pull a permit CO, first. you have to pull a permit, hire a licensed Scranton contractor to go and do it. It's, pay, it's pay for the permit. Is oh, that true in residential that. or is that just commercial? Well, I, I only know. Well, I should know. I, uh, it's both. 
It's both residential it and commercial. It probably is. So are you legally not allowed to change an outlet? Technically, I don't think so. Oh, absolutely not. Really? Yeah. Absolutely not. Why'd you just break the law? Oh, I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, maybe maybe after an incident. Maybe you can on your own. I'm sure I'm sure you're frowned upon uh, to do something wow. like that. So they gotta get their money. So they so, so they showed up and they and they wait, how much is a permit? Oh, I didn't pay that. I, I mean, we did pay it. I'm not, I'm not 100%. It sure. just got rolled into the contractor's cost. No, 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 no. Frank had to write a check. This is how much it is. Actually, um, we, we had a licensed city electrician do the permit. So maybe when he gives us his, his, his bill, invoice, he'll yeah. probably say, okay, this is how much this was. So I don't want to say I know how much this is because I don't know. I don't think it's crazy. I'm, sorry, I, I'm guessing 100 like, to 200. No, I think it's like 35 bucks. Yeah, but also these two outlets to replace is could less be wrong. Than a it could dollar. be eight thousand dollars. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, right. So we have. Uh, so the inspectors come through. The fire. The fire. This is Saturday the first. This is Saturday the first, and they saw something in the kitchen where the fire was nowhere. They said this oven is invented properly. You need to get this. So that was one thing they had to do to, mm-hmm. for reinspection. You got to vent this convection oven. It's not vented. So okay, no problem. Number two, you got to get these receptacles replaced. That's number two. Number three, your emergency exit lighting needs to work, and it did. So when they pull the power, we still had the exit. We still had the exit lights. I got you. But then eventually, like, there's a battery on those, and they die, don't they? Well, eventually. So yeah. when I get reinspected today at mm-hmm. one o'clock, you know, these things have to work. Right. They have to work, and you needed to. Re- we needed to replace our fire extinguishers. Like, that's it. That's all that was on the list. The hole that was in the roof. Well, you can get an extension to fix that because it's January. So, okay. You know, that's so that's going to happen. But those fixes are like you can do that in an afternoon at yeah, Lowe's. That's like a day. Well, it's stucco. They cut through stucco. So No, I'm talking about like the bar, not the not the exterior oh, of the, oh, the, the bar. Stuff right. That you oh, have yeah, to do right. for your electrical so, so, and- so the business stuff, or not the business stuff, but the structural stuff, we're gonna get to. It has yeah. nothing to do with my bar right. at all. Oh, so okay. so you know, um you had we had to pull a permit to get the to get the stove convection oven vented. I had to pull a permit for that. Um and we called Cintas. Cintas is the big one around here to get your fire extinguishers back. Yep. It's a phone call. Dude, we wasted our fire extinguishers. Yeah. Can you Putting please get them here? They're like, oh, yeah, you're going to pay for them, right? We're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like the next day. <laughs> we'll be right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and, of course, uh, electrical outlets and our, uh, and our emergency lighting still worked. So what happens next is the hardest part for me to uh, even go on and on about. Um, but. So Monday, you call, yeah, because it's now you could do something about it. January third, yeah. Now that you now that you shut me down, mm-hmm. you know Monday's the first day you could help me get reopened. It's the first day I could go for a permit. Yep, it's the first day I could do anything. I can't do anything without them people. You know, so we call the insurance companies, we call the LCB, we call everybody and go. Here's what's happened, and we want to be open as soon as possible. Um, I do want to say that. Uh, I did get the fire chief outside. I believe he was the chief. No, he was the head inspector. Looked him in, the, in his eyeballs. Such a nice guy. And I said, best case scenario, meaning my last name is DeNaples. Line it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like best case scenario, I'm a somebody. <laughs> when do you think we could reopen? This guy could have said anything. He could have said anything. And I just, I never, I never survived a fire. It's my first fire. Never survived one. And he said, two to three weeks. I couldn't believe him. I thought that, was, thought that was too soon. Because I didn't really understand the extent of the damage on Saturday. So he's telling me this on Saturday. Right. Uh, he showed me what was wrong. And he said, like, two to three weeks. He goes, that's the best. Po- that's Everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. You could be open in two to three weeks. And I, just, I never believed him. When I spoke with Frank aside, and I said, man, that doesn't sound right. You know what I mean? Like, we have... We have no water. We have no power. You know, I didn't understand the minimal amount of damage there really was. Yeah. You know, because there was water. The water got at in the time at the time. Water yeah. got in the bar. So Monday. They we call. They don't return our call. They don't show up. We didn't even wait very long. Our first person of influence that could call somebody at the city. We asked. We hate to ask anybody, mm-hmm. but it's a favor. Mm-hmm. You know, ding, 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 dude, like we're, we're shut down. We need to be open. We have 14 employees. We've done everything. We're going to do everything. 
Could you call over to the city? They're not calling us mm -hmm. back. What happens next is a just a red carpet of bullshit that happens, <laughs> mm -hmm. that happens like day after day after day where, uh, and Frank handled almost all of this because yeah. my wife went back to school and I was home with my baby. Mm -hmm. So, and I made that very clear. I'm like, listen, I can bring the baby down there. I said, but my, you know, Carrie's gone to school and I'm home with the baby. Frank handled all this stuff, but man, he was just so frustrated at, so the, you know, so Monday we got a phone call after Mr. Influence calls city hall. Oh yeah. 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 We were going to get to you, you know? Sure. It's Tuesday. Uh, I think somebody came down Wednesday. They sent an inspector to, uh, to look at the electrical. And we found out that Monday, almost like a week later that they sent a guy who wasn't qualified to do the inspection. Fuck off. I, I mean, it's almost like, you know, you're building a comedy and you're going to put all the funniest people mm -hmm. in. It's like sending the gynecologist in as the cardiologist. It's exactly what happened. They told us, oh, well, you know, that wasn't the right person. We're going to have to send another person. Didn't out. that person know that? He should walk up there and be like, I'm not certified for and, this. And here's the crazy thing. People come there. I have a busy bar. People are making money that work for me. You know, when you collect, no bartender puts all of, no bartender calls Frank on Monday morning and Frank says, you know, you, how much of these tips are you claiming? And everyone in general, not everyone. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to buy a house, you are telling, you're you telling your employer, on paper you're telling your yeah. employer that, yeah. you know, you made this much and then it'll come out of your check. Yeah. But in general, my employees can only collect on average. Now, these are, these are the $3 an hour bartenders. These guys are collecting a hundred bucks a week. Yeah. We want to get open. We want them to get oh, We want them to make money. We want to make money too, but you know, we might be in a better uh, situation uh, financially than the people that are bartenders there. So this wave of baloney is just never ending. Uh, we have to call the LCB and we have to tell them, hey, you know, you have to put your you have to put your license like in escrow to bed if you don't use it every two weeks. What? <laughs> They'll give your liquor license back to the LCB for safekeeping. If you're not open in 14 days, every 14 days. What? When, yeah. you, were, when you were shut down, did you have to put that? No, no, we, we didn't. Well, they, they, ironic. They, yeah, isn't that funny? They, they let yeah. everybody skate on that. So because of COVID. But yeah. here we are, we had to call the LCB. And now, you know, we're calling the LCB because we got our appointment and we're saying, hey, uh, we just put our liquor license in, you know, in escrow there. We need it back. You know, well, we'll see what we can do. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, even though we have our inspection today at one o'clock, you know what? I don't know that someone's showing up at one. I don't know if the person that's supposed to show has COVID today. Yeah. Or they're qualified. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's been, and talk about anxiety. You know, I just have to look in my kid's eyes and go, oh, I'm so lucky. Yeah. And not, yeah. to not look at the half empty glass I mean, my glass is always half full and, mm -hmm. and i'm not in control of, of this so we actually had to because of, of all these silly obstacles we had to call mr influence a second time and say hey there's a lot of horse shit going on here yeah mm -hmm. could you please call over there so after two calls from mr influence to say hey these guys are friends let's yeah. go yeah enough crap enough excuses um we we're here today and uh, it didn't end, but they they were not like the bozos that had a fire anymore. We're like, oh, these people are serious. You know, they, we were letting them down. You know, they yeah. had that. They had multiple excuses. I didn't even mention them all. So um, if we if we get uh, if we pass our inspection today, then we could probably open up immediately. And now we have to worry about getting our liquor license. Uh, it's out it, of escrow. It's nuts listening to you talk because it's like, if government this feels, isn't that crazy? Well, this feels like fucking clown world. Well, <laughs> but if government worked well, there wouldn't be a, as a need for as much government. City hall is closed. On top of all yeah. of our issues, city hall is Why are closed, they closed due to COVID. What do you mean they're closed? They're closed. You can't go in the building. Why? They're in there because of COVID. I mean, I mean, why? Right. I mean, you could. Right. I, I got a mask. Somebody let me in there. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't let me in there. I what don't, a clown show. So I don't, I don't understand. Super that. disappointing. Super, super disappointing. And so, but I mean, after everything that you've been through for like the last two years, like these, 
Like these, look, I have no, I, I have no beefs with City Hall. They never screwed with me. I, I, I don't know. I, do. I just, I just know that it's government, right? Those After that everything can't go into politics. Everything that you've done has been by the book. Everything by the letter, all the time. Taking it to use a, a a a local colloquialism, taking it in the ass the whole time, and no one can go. Oh yeah, let's expedite this. These guys have suffered enough. That's the that's that's the part where I would think that we not earned it, but look, where's our record? Where's that? Sh- that but there's, but there's 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 no there's no there's no fucking right. there's no gold ring for following what 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 pe- Help, what these people tell you to do. Helping somebody out, you know, helping somebody out. Yeah, but like you do everything right and you still get screwed. Well, I mean, I am in the bar business, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we're not the. It's just baffling. You know, we're not golden. We're not a golden business in the community. Yeah, but you're but, an institution. Like the V spot is like one of the few places you can go yeah, listen maybe to music. One day, maybe we'll be considered. No, you're an there. No, an you're, there. you're there. You're there. an institution. You're, you're the you're the tinks of Providence. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's that's a great compliment because you know I worked for the Coopers and I would again I take love the Coopers. I would take another soft bullet in a non organ part of my body for those people. <laughs> I aren't they the I, best? I, man? Th- well, they're they're the best. If there's if anyone was to argue with me, you'd have to really double down because I worked for those people for five years. Coopers and, are awesome, and, and they just they treated me. They treated me, and I, I was never, and I worked for the Maloney's, and they treated me incredibly nice when I worked up at Damon's. I was there for almost six years, and I was at Cooper's for over four, not the closer end of five, but I was at Cooper's for almost five before I opened up my own bar. Those people treated me like gold, like gold. And, There's very and, few, like, legit, oh, like, sincere I love, people I love the them world. people. I love them people so much, I, so much. And what Paul Cooper, I just opened up, my mail came yesterday. And Paul put a personal check in there to give to. He goes, I heard you. You heard He's your the nicest fucking. I heard you world. had a GoFundMe, and I heard you had a fundraiser, and I want you to apply this to those people. There's not a bad Cooper. There's not a bad Cooper. I can't. I can't there's find a, one. There's I'm a like, wild. There's a wild Cooper. <laughs> yeah, but I was. But it's I like. Wild but it's like odds. But the one rest of them's going to be an asshole. None of them are. Like they're good, them, they're good, good people. great people. I I just I can't. Like we could do a podcast for an hour of me. Telling you how much I love that family. Well, good. I'll just live stream it right you to their office. I mean? <laughs> yeah. They would appreciate that. So, so, what, so wrapping up the fire. Um, yeah. We um we we obviously did all those things. We got mm-hmm. the ex- fire extinguishers. We replaced the receptacles. We are uh, our sign or our emergency lighting is going to work. You know, uh, today hopefully the LCB is being uh, is is feeling like these guys need a. These guys need this. Nothing happens you immediately. So. Like nothing happens immediately unless it's condemning you or like <laughs> or, or, or shutting you down, like yanking mm-hmm. your liquor license. Yeah. So this is a particular uh, thing where my band Saturday is from York. My band Friday is a local band. You know, like this is this could be it's going to be horribly cold. This could be a really big weekend for everyone. Yeah. For people that love the bar, for my bartenders finally make some money again. Uh, and, and to be a musician to play on a stage where people listen to you and appreciate it yes. is a big plus. So all so all these things we want to happen in the worst way. So if the, maybe we can open up today. We're not ready to open up today. You know, we've redone the bar top. We've done things that we've never done in ten years. You know, we looked at we looked at everything and went, wow, let's let's do this. Let's do that. Let's show you this. You know, let's yeah, let's 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 switch this up. And we and we've done those things. So when you walk in the bar, you're gonna notice uh, that there's no dust on the uh, on the uh, icicle lights. <laughs> <laughs> we got rid of the dust on the icicle lights. That's uh, gonna be notice number good one for you, That's man. My favorite your bar. <laughs> well, smoke and fire uh, restoration. Yeah, ran like HVAC, like uh, like top of the line skyscraper Sucked everything stuff out of there in there. Yeah. And and um, after the power went back on, they loaded the place up with these machines, and it was like walking into like a 4K movie because the air was so clean like and we're on providence road there's mm-hmm. a lot of cars there's just a lot of shit in lot the of air that you don't see yeah. so every time that door is open or for whatever reason it just comes in that bar that bar is at a mm-hmm. very very dirty location yeah so to have the door closed and to have these machines like it was gorgeous i walked in there and said oh, awesome look at this place it looks so good we'll you turn know a positive into a negative yeah well, I mean, or a negative into a positive. yeah i mean that's you know so we we we, we um we did our bar top again today and uh, we just cleaned some things that because because we're open seven days a week, you know, we look at this needs to be clean. Yeah. And then there's some things where you need a fire to go. 
I'm going to get to that thing that I've been, <laughs> yeah. I've been staring at forever. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? I don't feel like getting that low on the ground. So right. all those things were done. Keep your fingers crossed um, for us today. So the big hurdle is the inspection with the city. It's that's I mean, that's everything. The, and this, then the liquor license and the, well, the liquor license. You know, we That's a phone call. The liquor license is supposed to be. I just, we just don't know the. We don't. We've never gotten our license back. We've never put it in escrow, so okay. it's new to us. Okay. You know what's the procedure? You know, we have. We do have. Uh, we have like a noise violation. Uh, our record, as far as a bar goes, is is pretty good. Yeah. You know, um, others aren't. Some are spotless. Ours is not spotless, but they should look at us and go, "This is not a nuisance bar." Right. You know, right, let's right. let's help you. You've already been closed for nineteen days or whatever. It's not a. Finn McCool's. <laughs> wow. My wife worked there. My wife Anybody worked there. Anybody remember Finn McCool? No. Oh, dude, that was the bar down in like, uh, where it's was it? Big, it's, it's Big Papa's and Little Mama's now. It's on Cedar Avenue. Yeah, the dude, and, dude, oh, dude, yeah, dude, I got, know. dude yeah. got a bullet in his head in the, in the, in bathroom. the bathroom. What? The one, the and one no one always, saw it. The yeah. one I always think of is the Sunset Bar down in like well, South that was, Side. That was, that's not open anymore. Is no, that? that was shut down after the big crack raid of oh, 2007. Oh, yeah. uh, I lived in South Side at the time and the Sun Hotel was, was I mean, I only learned because I had some mutual friends that I kind of knew that were part of that, part of the arrest and I just never knew. The Sun Hotel, you would never like. You just wouldn't go there. You, you're, I walked in there once. Your spidey like, senses. Oh, oh, your really? spidey senses oh, would yeah. go. You could I, only get a room by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, I, I walked in once and I'm like, I really think that guy is shooting heroin right now. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was terrifying. So I'm not the Sun Hotel. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. I hope, I hope yeah. to never become anything like that. I'd like to run a, I'd like to run a, I'd like to run a rock and roll bar. Yeah. Till I don't run a rock and roll bar. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. I want, yeah. I want music. And I want people that love music in my bar. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you don't love music and you're in my bar, I hope you love alcohol or I hope you love something. But I, I'm a, I'm not a musician. Songs right? you can so drink too. I can play right. I can play. Yep. I can play instruments. But I'm not a musician. Right. But I love musicians and I love, I love everything about that. And mm-hmm. I, when, when I met Frank for the first time, he goes, "Hey, I heard you could possibly run this bar for me." He goes, "He owned the building." He goes, we'll be 50, 50 partners. He goes, and I don't want to do anything with it. He goes, I want you to run it. I want you to run it. And, and, and immediately I said, it's going back to what it used to be. And it was a music venue. And a venue is a fancy word. Right. Venue is not the right word because we don't sell tickets. We weren't like what uh, Steve was doing up there at Stage West having events. Right. So our venue, when I hear venue, I think of that. But we're a, 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 big, a big corner bar. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want to do bands and that's what I want because I wanted people like me in my bar. Right. So it's my bar. Yeah. I want people like me in my bar. It's gotten way out of control. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten way out of control since then. Now, yeah. now the biggest, now the biggest night of the week is it could be a Friday, Saturday with a big band, but there's, there's a, there's a handful of big bands. Then there's a lot of bands that are good, but you know, if, if nowhere slow is playing, Pat. That's my busiest yeah, yeah. night of the week, and, you know, and mm-hmm. I could name, uh, you know, Lightweight and and uh, Black Tie Stereo, and for any band I didn't mention, I don't mean anything by that, but yeah, there's just are, too many of these, you to mention. There's yeah. there's so many. These are some bands that really like if they're playing, They'll pull a crowd, oh, pull a crowd. Yeah. On Sunday night for karaoke, it Packed. it it's be it's re, it's stupid, and these people are these people. I'm sorry. What do you mean these I'm people? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm these 50. People. I'm sorry. I'm 55. There's not. There's like four 55 year olds being made fun of all night long in there because they're 55 because the crowd is so young. Yeah. And and it's karaoke. And so, uh, I get it. Why have we never done you that? You can't come to my bar because you hear, don't go out. I don't. I'm old. We have a DJ on Monday who plays your requests. Okay. So on Sunday and Monday, you could come to the V spot and you could hear current hits. Or great party songs. You're not going to hear that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. You know what I mean? I have low, I have acoustic musicians. Of course, yeah. you can do whatever you want on the jukebox, but mm-hmm. but I'm giving you today's stuff on Sunday and Monday. And I could probably be a lot more well off if I said, whoa, 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 here's where the money is. But then that's where the problems are with the younger. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? More, right. more things happen generally with, with uh, the younger 
uh, folks that are still learning how to navigate around yeah, how to uh, behave. lemon drops. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, 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 and green and, tea and, shots and, and, and all these and all these things. Let me yeah. tell you about a time but, when they started making Red Bull and vodka and Jaeger bombs were new. Yeah. They <laughs> yeah. were amazing. Oh, yeah. I was bartending. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was twenty one and it was fantastic. I remember all the rage. So so that's the funny thing is and just to, you know, I, I want to tie that. I wanted a mute I wanted a rock and roll bar. And now my busiest night is karaoke where you know, no one, it, you're not here. No one's going up there to sing Master of Puppets because the the, the DJ goes, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not singing, a, you're not singing yeah. an eight minute song. You know right. what I mean? With, right. a, with a guitar solo. It's not going to happen. So, so <laughs> it's, it's super busy. It's super yeah. busy. And that's, and that's the most stressful night for my staff. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's, and I don't, I, I don't even want to go down the, the derogatory or the negatives about that night. But it wasn't what I thought, what I wanted. Yeah, you know. And now probably any bar would kill to have my Sunday night. You sure. know what I mean? And 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 I don't want it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like none of my bartenders like. Of course they like the money that they make, but they're all like, Vin. But that's that's how you get successful, Vin. This Sunday, and it's one for them, well, one for you. It's when well, it's also it's also how if I do have a bad reputation, right? It's most likely from Sunday. Yeah, has nothing to do with the, the DJ. Lord's day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All the stuff I have to pick up Monday morning over at Charlie's parking lot. <laughs> you know, just in general. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I, I walk out there and I Who can't. Who brought a Roomba? I, exactly. I can't believe that somebody, <laughs> I can't believe that somebody can't just take their empty. Yeah. It's not that their hard. Their empty cool pack and just put it in their pot. Why do you have to throw it on the ground? Because why not? I find all the Keystone Light pounders. Yeah. I don't sell Keystone Light. What is going People on People are game in the V-spot. It's just in the parking lot. <laughs> it's in the parking lot. So I, I feel like I'm probably the luckiest bar owner in the city. I feel so grateful for everything that I have. And uh, will there be like, am I going to grow from a fire? You know, you know what we, we could talk about? Well, you only have 10 minutes left, but just let me know. I got it. Then uh, it's already after 12. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then seven. So seven. Okay. Eight minutes. The people that what Rich Howells did for me. He's awesome, isn't he? What he did for me. So so Rich is Rich is the Rich is the everything of any PA scene. He's the writer. He's the uh, curator. He's he's the Facebook. He's he's the website. This guy, the words finds the time. I'm surprised his head isn't so much bigger because his brain must be enormous (laughs) to the content that this guy puts out. Yeah. So he goes without he goes without asking me because I don't know if I would have agreed, but he's an you're humble. He's an administrator on my page for one reason. And it's to share his it's to share his streams when they're from the V spot. Right. He got tired of saying, Hey Vinny, could you could you do this for me? Could you do that for me? I said, Rich, here's here's the passcode to the yeah. page. You know? Yeah. So what he does is he goes and he puts on my page that there's a that there's a bet a, a GoFundMe. <laughs> and I didn't find that out. Someone said, There's a GoFundMe. I said, Where? They said, On your page. I said, What? <laughs> Mm-hmm. I texted I texted our personal bar thread of all of our bartenders yeah. and Frank and our, our head cook and said, what is going on? And then and then I called Rich and I said, Rich, I said, I'm super humbled and I'm quite embarrassed about this. And I want you to know, you know, I don't think I would have okayed that. And he says, and that's why he did it behind your back. And he said, he goes, yeah. it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Right. And and then I just I did that goose fraba. <laughs> and I said, I'm on the other line with a guy who's thinking about me. Right. And he's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I was embarrassed. I, I had a couple of bartenders text me privately and say, and say, I will not take a dollar of a GoFundMe. And I said, I know how you feel. I'm, right. I'm also, I'm also like feeling like I, I don't want help. You know what I mean? We have insurance. We're going to pay for everything mm-hmm. and, and we'll take care of anyone that I, you know, I, I messaged every single person that works for me and says, if you need money, I will lend you whatever you need. I will not give you That's awesome. anything. <laughs> I will lend you. I will lend you whatever you need. Interest. With yeah. zero interest. Yeah. I'll lend you. I said, every, I said, don't you struggle. Don't take from your savings. Don't ask yeah. your parents. Don't ask your ex. Vinny, I need this. I'll give it to you. There's no problem. Right. So Rich did that for me. And then, so the GoFundMe starts and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed about it. I never shared it. So Still. The, I never shared it to this minute. I, I'm so, em- I hate to use the word embarrassed because it makes me sound that I'm not grateful. But I've never even looked to the second of who donated because I, 
I can't. I just can't. I can't. I, you know what I mean? To think that somebody gave money. You know, there's a lot of things you need but money for these days. That's because people care about you, well, man. I mean, well, it's not. It's clear. It's don't, not for me. Don't it's shit not for on their Frank. gift. That's exactly, precisely, and that's where it's it's for the staff. I mean, I'm not going to pocket a dollar of that, and none of that money is going to go to fix anything. We have insurance for that. That's yeah, right. it's going to the staff. So since all this has happened, I'm like, you know, I've learned to 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 live with it, right? Yeah. And then Gene from Gene Peculiar. Philbin from Peculiar yeah. <laughs> throws together this. He's not even open on Sunday. He it was takes, awesome, wasn't it? He, Gene and I have been in each other's company, as far as I know, two times. He's a big metalhead too. I, I don't have Gene's. I don't have Gene's cell number. I'll send it to you. I've never no I have it now, but I mean, at the time <laughs> that he does this, I don't know Gene aside from what he looks like, and two two particular nice encounters we had. He's one of the best dudes in the world, man. So if you want to know your how, kitchen, man, if you want to know how good he is, go look at your GoFundMe. I, I, ex- <laughs> exactly. So, so, um, so he, he uh, 10 bucks and some Entenmann's. So <laughs> yeah. it, it cons- I get, so through rich, rich, rich says, uh, Hey, peculiar. He said peculiar might do something. The next time I talk about it, it's already organized. There's already Adam McKinley playing. There's already yeah, mm-hmm. Dustin Douglas playing. Mm-hmm. There's already uh Jeremy Burke playing and, and vendors. Yes. It's all set up. It's all set up. I'm like, I can't. I, I'm the giver. I'm the one that doesn't like to open a present at Christmas time. I'm, right. I'm, I get my satisfaction. It's selfish. It's my satisfaction. Mm-hmm. It's selfish. I'm, I like to give. And I get a little uncomfortable with getting. I really, I, any, anything, no matter what it is. I feel like if I don't That's have a sign of a good person, if I, I'm there are worse people out there. I don't know what's the best angle. I don't know who's looking at you want to look right into the camera. But, uh, That's right into that camera right yeah. there. There That's are you. worse people than me. That's a fact. I'm, you know, I'm not a terrible yeah, but we guy. We killed Hitler. So. <laughs> there's Actually, the Russians. Did, there's so got to be some. Thank my wife. There's got to be somebody else. So uh, the benefit, the benefit happens. And uh, we went there and it was I mean, Gene says I, he has. Gene's not even open on Sunday. No, he did that for you. Gene did this for us. Uh, I can't. I haven't even put together the. So this happened Sunday. Today's already Wednesday. Yeah. And for two days, I thought about what to say, how to say it, you know, and I still haven't even done it. Maybe it'll be more celebratory if I find out at one o'clock or two o'clock or three o'clock today that we're open back up. Yeah. So. But for an hour and a half, you've just said it. I, yeah, well, yes. you just said if, if I didn't say yeah. it, if I didn't say it enough, I'm beyond grateful. And 130 yeah. people paid 10 bucks to go, you know, 130 people. Um, his, he has 38 seats. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was, was butts to nuts. it yeah. was, it was butts to nuts. And, and, and I didn't know every single face in there, but I knew almost everybody in there yeah. and almost everyone that worked for me was there. And it was such a good feeling. And then if, if you, if you don't know me, I'll I'll tell you right now, I love to drink. (laughs) I love to drink. I don't drink at home. I don't drink at home. I'm not like an alcoholic. I don't have a problem. I love to drink. I can't wait for the occasion to have another fucking drink at that, at that, uh, fundraiser. I I had all the drinks. (laughs) I had all the drinks. I had I, I bought drinks for people and I saw they didn't need it yet. I'm like, well, that one's mine. How, how so I was like, how, I was how into it were you before uh, during WBREs? Oh, were they like, hey, what are you? That was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I sent I was, it to him. I, I was sent- all lit up. I was all lit up, and and WBRE has covered the V spot f- since Corona started. You're great, like yeah. so often, yeah. so often, asking me, hey, do you mind if we do this? Do you mind if we do that? So by the time, uh, by the time uh, Caroline showed up and said, oh, you know, nobody messaged me. He just shows right. up and says, hey, do you mind if we, you know, shoot this and and you ask you ask you a question? And I'm like, yeah, totally into it. So uh, free attention. I'm so going to share the video. I'm going to share the video of what you initially said to her. Oh, I don't know. If you, I don't know if you should. Oh, it's I think hysterical. you should. It's great. Oh, really? I'll play it to you right after this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll put it on. I'll put it on as like an addendum. All right. Um, so that day ended. Uh, it ended with a drink afterwards and uh, with Rich Howells and his wife yep. and Gene and his wife and his staff. And I, I left I left there feeling like I was so fortunate. And I, I feel so fortunate even talking about it now, even though my business isn't open. But right. I've been just like the uh, humanity. The humanity has been restored. And so I can just put the weight of this on here again. 
Gene Philbin and I hardly knew each other, mm-hmm. and he did that. Yeah. And and, and that, that took organization. That took a phone call. Hey, will you will you prepare this food? We're going to do this. And those guys that played and all that stuff. I just I uh I'm very charitable. Um, but I've never really had to do a lot of work. I have the place. Mm. I've got the lights. I've got the sound. I've got the stools. I've got it all. When someone says, "Can I do something at your bar?" Yeah. All I've got to do is say, "Yeah." Yeah. What I've I've I can't I can't imagine. I don't think I've ever really organized anything besides a, a fucking birthday party. You know what I mean? Like a surprise birthday party for my wife's uh, like fortieth birthday. I think that took some work. I enjoyed none of it. <laughs> Not the party, but the organizing. Yeah, the organizing. Calling someone saying, "I'm counting on you." To get a hold of this, I don't. I like what I can do. I right. like to be in control yeah. of what I want to do. Well, you see, also seem like somebody doesn't like the spotlight on them. I don't. Not I, in that I, way. I, I'm Not here in that I, way. I'm here. I'm here to talk today because I, I felt like I had a story to tell mm-hmm. about you know what it's like to go through a fire and how difficult it is to get reopened. I didn't. Under, and, I didn't. Realize and without that. and without our influencer, things. I don't know where we would be as of today. Now we're yeah. closed two weeks, and today's Wednesday. We're closed 18 days. I think that's fucked. And because we know someone that could shake shit up, Mm -hmm. we're, you know, we ended up being closed 18, 19 days when we had to change two receptacles, get three fire extinguishers back, invent an oven. Those things could all, all the things that were needed could have been done in hours. Yeah. You know, in hours. And so I'm super grateful. Uh, and uh, you know it's running on close to a month's revenue, which is yeah. which is a scary thing. Yes, yes, and and so, so there's going to be a bunch of money mm-hmm. going to be dispersed to my staff, and I want to say um, thank you. Where's the camera? I want to thank everyone that donated. I uh, I think the GoFundMe, especially if it's if we're going to be uh, granted our uh, permission to open again today, that would uh, will end the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe the goal was ten. And I saw it today. It was well over eight. Mm-hmm. You know, thousand. Yeah, yeah, like eighty five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yep. And Good for you. So I want to say thank you to everyone that donated. Thank you to everyone who wanted to donate that couldn't donate. I totally get it. Thanks to everyone who just cares about people. I appreciate it uh, more than these words can ever express. And Rich Howells, what you did for me, Gene Philbin, what you did for me, um, and my wife for waking up every day with me not knowing and and how you know you know what it's like you guys have you guys are married or you you live with somebody and i want everyone on this podcast to see what i want them to see but our spouses Mm. live with us thousand percent you know what i mean and i can't say that every day i woke up happy you're happy yeah you know so and my wife and my family are everything to me and they understood that the kids were like daddy's bar burned down you know and and my wife was like you know super supportive because that's she is the greatest carrie yeah you're the greatest everybody's been on my side and you guys were nice enough to let me come in here and and do this and i i couldn't be more uh gracious appreciate it i cannot think of a better way to end a podcast than with my balls then are you gonna show us your balls real quick Wait to see these things. I thought it was such a perfect wait, sentimental wait, did I ruin any of these moment. Did no, I, no, 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 no. We got to end it with uh, we balls. See it. Did I? Did I ruin it? Were you? Is this, no. Were you, is that what you were getting? No, no it was going to be sweet. Gonna it was going to be sweet. I was going to. I was just going to tell him to say it, but I want. I actually want to see this first. So I asked the doctor, Doctor Mori Wasnitzer. He he's he's a Googler. What you, nas- you'll find what him. What nationality is that? Where's 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 that? It's got to be Jewish, German, yeah. Wasnitzer, Austrian. Who knows? Polish. Uh, all those things, all wrapped. All wrapped up into one. Um, uh, oh, so many pictures, and so many pictures of, of meat, his balls, and so many pictures of <laughs> yeah. meat, which it's resemble brisket in his testicles, which <laughs> resemble uh, this. Uh, there it is. Did okay. you find it? This is legit. People think that this is like screenshotted off of like a. Make but, sure you get the reaction. So so, so now, uh, you guys are passing. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> So I asked the doctor. Are your balls out? Oh. Yeah. So Those I, are outside of your skin. Oh, God, take it back. <laughs> oh, Dan. Take it back, Dan. Don't, <laughs> don't look. Well, I want to see this. Oh, my God. 
So, so, so wait, you lean let's, forward let's, and took let's, a picture let's, of your- No, no, that was this, that was the, the, the rogue, the rogue uh, third person in the room. Uh, so there's a video. Oh, fuck. Say, there's a video of some people's of him grabbing it and like putting it back oh, in, in, into I Destination don't, Zero. I don't, I don't. Uh, so, Destination uh, fi- Zero? So finally, finally, so when the, when the operation was <laughs> over, when the operation was over, I said to the doctor, I said, now tell me wiener size where we at he goes he goes you're not even in the ballpark he goes you're not even going to be reviewed i said well well i said well how about how about my balls he goes like top 10 he goes he goes those things look like dinosaur eggs so that's that's where so that's how that ended Right there, and then there was no there was no follow up. I we were able. To, I think that's how this ends. We were able yeah. to, Everybody, yeah. if you can, make sure that you go to the V spot yeah. as often as you can. Thank Dan, you. you need to switch cameras. You totally blanked. <laughs> were you, yeah. Are you stoned? No, no. Yeah, I'm doing a lot over here. Yet. It's all new. Yeah, and, you know. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, look, man, we love you. Thank you. Everyone loves you. Thank you. I love you too. Don't 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 be weird about taking people's love. For the next fire, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit more rehearsed. Yes, I'll be a little um, more rehearsed. Give everybody a chance to do for you what you've been doing for them. It feels weird, <sighs> Vinny. It feels weird, but I made it through. But it gives you hope. Yeah. I made it through. I actually, I lived through it, and I I should have been today. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go look at all the people that donated. Oh, I'm gonna do that today. Do it. And can you can you like it? I don't know. I think you can. I don't know. I was just on there. Okay. But you can send them messages. There's a hundred, like 120 you know people donated do? or something like that. You should like that. send them all pictures of that, that <laughs> those balls. Thank yeah. you for thank you for thinking of me. I have I thought can, of you. I could finally have my testicle shrinkage surgery yes. that I was that I was hoping for. <laughs> yes. Um we all love you, man. Thanks. I'm really grateful that that you are the human Thanks being for this that time. you are. This was and nice. I'm really grateful that like in times of terrible, terrible shit, this community does Came come together. together and they help the people that yeah. they love, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. You good? Yeah. You want to say it? What a week, man. <laughs> <laughs>